there! It's time for one hour of Miss Booksy's favorite fairy tales, starting with Tinkerbell and Peter Pan. Far, far away, farther than you've ever imagined, there is a magical place called Neverland. It used to be Never Neverland, but we shortened it back in 1911. Oh, sorry, I should introduce myself. I'm Tinkerbell. <laughs> I've lived here forever. No, seriously, like forever. <laughs> Since the beginning of time. You see, I'm a fairy. <laughs> and as you know, fairies can live forever. Well, as long as enough children still believe in fairies. You do believe in fairies, don't you? Good. <laughs> so yeah, I'm like a million billion years old. And I don't look a day over a million. <laughs> and of course, being a fairy means I can fly. <laughs> see? <laughs> My friend Peter can fly too, but he's not a fairy. He needs fairy dust and happy thoughts to fly. But I can fly whenever I want because I have fairy wings. Even when I'm thinking really sad thoughts like, what if I never ate birthday cake again ever in my life? That would be truly sad. But look, still flying. <laughs> birthday cake is very special in Neverland, by the way, because a lot of people here don't have birthdays, like Peter. He stopped having birthdays when he turned 11. He's been 11 for years and years and years and years. <laughs> when someone does have a birthday, it's a very big to do with lots and lots and lots and lots of cake. <laughs> anyway, let me tell you more about Neverland. There are people like Tiger Lily and the Lost Boys. Hello. Hi there. Fairies, of course. Hey. Hello. Mermaids. What's up? And pirates. Yar. They're very annoying. More on them later. Sometimes we have visitors from the mainland. That's what we call your world. Actually, Peter Pan and the Lost Boys came from the mainland. They all started out as regular babies. And then one by one, a nice fairy comes along and scoops them up and brings them here to Neverland, where they get to be a child forever and ever and ever. Oh, I hope you don't think that's scary or sad. Being a kid is the best. Really, think about how great your life is as a kid. You get to play all day. Grown-ups have to go to work at boring jobs and wear uncomfortable suits and say things like, bills, bills, bills. So Peter and the Lost Boys get to play forever. They live in tree houses with lots of fun stuff like zip lines and slides and parachutes. And no one ever tells them to go to bed, or keep their elbows off the table, or clean their room. Oh, hey, there's Peter now. Hey, Petey. <laughs> hey, Tink, who you talking to? Those kids out there. Guys, say hi to Peter Pan. Hi. I've been telling them all about Neverland and everyone who lives here. You should tell them the story of Captain Hook. Which one? Good point. I guess there are a lot. Well, maybe you should start with the story of how we met the darlings. Great idea. OK, kids, get settled, because this story takes a lot of twists and turns. It started one night around bedtime. Peter was flying around the mainland just as parents were putting their children to sleep. Peter would listen at nursery windows, hoping to hear a bit of a bedtime story. He remembered hearing bedtime stories when he was just a little baby, and it made him feel really happy to hear them again. So there he was, flying around, looking and listening for the best story, when he heard the sweetest voice. Once upon a time, there was a girl named Cinderella. Well, that's what her mean stepsisters and stepmother called her. Peter Pan listened to every word and was so sad when he finally heard. And everyone lived happily ever after. Not because he doesn't like everyone living happily ever after. No, that's great. It was just that I wanted to listen to this girl's stories forever. Peter Pan began flying back to the same nursery night after night, and the girl's stories only got better and better. Well, one night, Peter was so content that he drifted off to sleep during her story. Then, while he was sleeping, his shadow decided to sneak away. Shadows can be quite sneaky, by the way. <laughs> hey, come back. Stop that. Is that you, John? Get back in bed. Who? Oh, what did you say, Wendy? Don't be scared. It's only my shadow. I'll just take it and be going. Aw, oh, nuts. Hold still. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Me? I'm Peter Pan. And that's how Peter Pan came to meet the darlings. Hey guys, so let's get back to the story. The darling children had just awakened to find Peter Pan flying around their nursery, chasing his runaway shadow. <laughs> Not your typical night. 
Nice to meet you, Peter. I'm Wendy. And I'm John. Hi, Wendy and John. Sorry about my shadow. Got it. Yay. Maybe I could sew it back on. That'd be great. Better? Perfect. How did you learn to fly like that? My friend Tink taught me. Tink? Me? A fairy! Can you teach us to fly? Please, please, please! All you have to do is think wonderful, lovely thoughts. But I think happy thoughts all the time and I've never flown. You have to concentrate really hard. I'm thinking of adorable tiny kittens. I'm thinking of a giant Ferris wheel. Petey, you're forgetting the most important part. Oh, right. Fairy dust. Now think of lovely thoughts. Whoa! Whoa! Huh? We're flying, Michael! I want to fly. Are you thinking happy thoughts? Yep. I'm thinking of flying. Yay! Shh! I hear Nana coming. Quick, pretend you're asleep. Did I hear a ruckus in here? No, Nana. No ruckus. Hmm. Good. Now go to sleep. Hey, you should come to Neverland with us. What's Neverland? What's Neverland? Why, Neverland is only the most amazing place in the whole universe. Well, I've never heard of it. It's not on any globe or map. It's out there, over the sea, past the stars. Jeez, don't they teach you guys anything in school? <laughs> come with us and see it. There are mermaids. Mermaids? Oh, let's go! Wait, we can't go out without Nana's permission. But when Nana's not here, you're in charge, Wendy. Oh, that's true. I am the eldest. Please, can we go, Wendy? Please. All right. Just for a little bit, but we have to be back by morning. Hooray! All right. Okay, lovely happy thoughts, everyone. And fairy dust. This is incredible. We're flying. Simply wonderful. To Neverland. Hi kids! Miss Booksy here with a brand new story here at Cool School. Today's fairy tale is one from the Brothers Grimm about Snow White. No, not Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. This one is about another girl named Snow White <laughs> and her sister Rose Red. But trust me, you'll like this story as much as the other Snow White. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Once upon a time, there were two sisters, Snow White and Rose Red. I'm Snow White. And I'm Rose Red. Cool. cool. The two sisters look just alike, except I always wear white. And I always wear red. Right, I guess that part was pretty obvious. Anyway, they were hanging out in their house one winter afternoon, just chilling in front of the fire when there was a big, loud knock on the door. Who could that be? It sounded like a bear. Snow White and Rose Red decided they would open the door and scare away the bear. As you know, kids, bears are dangerous. Do not try this at home. Even if you have a really big frying pan. On the count of three. One, One two, two, three! three. Ah! Yeah! Whoa, easy. I come in peace. Hold up. You can talk? That's cool. But tell me this, talking bear. How do we know you're not dangerous? You'll just have to trust me. Sorry, we don't. Yeah, you're a really big bear. And you can talk, which is weird. I don't like the feeling of this. Also, you've got really big teeth. Yeah, seems like you'd be dangerous. I understand. I was just hoping you'd let me warm up by the fire. But okay, I'll go. Okay, maybe we can let him warm up just a bit on one condition. So they tied him up, just in case he got hungry. At first it was kind of awkward. But soon they were like old friends. The three sat by the fire and chatted all afternoon. The bear seemed perfectly nice. He promised that he definitely did not want to eat Snow White and Rose Red. He explained he was mostly vegetarian. Sometimes he ate fish, but never ever people. <laughs> when their parents came home, they were quite surprised to find a bear tied to their lazy boy. Snow White and Rose Red begged them to let him stay the night. Please, 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 please
Do you think it's safe, dear? I don't know. He is a grizzly bear, after all. He's a vegetarian! Well, I guess it's okay. He better behave. Yay! The next morning, the girls untied him. Sorry about the ropes. Had to play it safe, you know? <laughs> hey, what's your name anyway? You can call me Grizz. Okay, Grizz. <laughs> See ya. The next night, Grizz came back. Then the next night, and the next night, and the next night, and okay, you get it. <laughs> he became like part of the family. He was the snuggliest, most gentle, awesomest bear ever. Like a real live teddy bear. But when summer came, Grizz said he had to go back into the woods to battle an evil troll. The girls were sad, but they understood that sometimes you had to go out and fight trolls. That's just how it is when you're living in a fairy tale. Hey Grizz, let us know if you need help. Yeah, I can bring my frying pan. I think I'll be okay, but thanks. Just a few days later, Snow White and Rose Red were really missing Grizz. No matter what they did, they imagined how much better it would be with Grizz there. Then, they began to worry about this evil troll. What if Grizz really does need our help? We must help him defeat the evil troll. The girls went into the forest and very soon found a little man with his beard stuck under a rock. Help me, somebody help me. The girls pushed the rock, but it wouldn't budge. Please do something, my beard, oh no. Wait, I know, I never go into the woods without my Girl Scout survival kit. Wait, don't do it. You terrible girl, you ruined my beard, my beautiful beard. I'm sorry, but you're stuck, we saved you. Go away. Fine. Fine. The girls went on their way, but they didn't find the troll or Grizz that day. The next day, they set out again, determined to find their friend and help him defeat the troll. But who did they see instead? That little man who was so vain about his beard. This time, he had gotten his foot stuck in a bear trap. Ah, my foot is stuck, help me. Even though he was very rude the last time they helped, Snow White and Rose Red knew they had to save him. Looks like your boot is stuck in the trap. If we cut down the side, then your foot will be free. No, no, don't cut it. But it was too late. Rose Red had cut open his fancy little boot and he was hopping mad. That was an Italian leather boot, you monster. Whoa there, buddy. My sister saved your life. Yeah, and you still have the other one. Scram. Fine, but next time we won't save you. Well, at least there isn't an open bear trap out there. How terrible if Grizz had gotten caught. It was pretty late, so the girls went home. No troll, no Grizz. The next morning, they set out again to find their bear friend. Oh, Grizz, we've got some honey for you. I have some line cut wild Pacific salmon for you. We miss you, Grizz. Oh, Grizz. Then Help. they heard a noise Help. from deep in the Help woods. Me. Someone Help. yelling. The girls searched and they found the same little man. This time he was hanging from a tree branch over a waterfall. How do you manage to get into these situations every day? Oh, shush, be quiet and help me. You were very mean every time we helped you. Well, I'll be nice this time, you smelly kid. I don't think you understand the meaning of the word nice. And I don't smell. But we will help you because we're Girl Scouts and that's what we do. Snow White and Rose Red were just about to pull him to safety when Grizz jumped out and roared. <laughs> Grizz, Grizz will save you. But instead of looking happy to be rescued, the little man's face grew mean, almost evil. His skin turned green and little horns sprouted from his hair. Ah! Evil, evil troll! troll! We, we found the evil, evil troll! Ha 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 ha! You yucky children are bear bait! I've been trying to lure this beast out of his hiding spot all year! Now he's gonna eat you, and then I'm gonna eat him! Ha 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 ha! Go ahead, bear! Have your snack! Snow White and Rose Red ran to Grizz and gave him a big old bear hug. He's our friend, he's not gonna eat us. Huh? Grizz swiped his big paw at the troll, but the troll jumped down on Grizz's paw and wouldn't let go. He had big nasty yellow teeth, ugh, gross. Then Snow White remembered she had brought some camping supplies. Among them, her trusty frying pan. Snow White swung it at the troll. <laughs> And down he went to the bottom of the waterfall. He yelled mean things the whole way down. 
Mean Things! Woohoo! The troll is gone forever! Yay, Grizz! We did it! But Grizz was gone! Grizz? Wait, he's not gone. I think he's transformed. Oh, hey guys. So yeah, I'm actually a prince. A prince? Hey, awesome. What? It's kind of a long story. Well, long story short, the prince explained that the evil troll had turned him into a bear because he was envious of the prince's fortune. So really, Grizz was a sweet prince who missed his family. That's why he was so nice. And it turns out that the curse could only be broken if Grizz defeated the troll, which wasn't so easy because he was a really mean troll. He had terrible manners. Oh, he was so rude. They went back to Snow White and Rose Red's house, had some ice cream, and called the prince's parents to come get him. The king and queen were overjoyed and decided to throw a huge party in his Snow White and Rose Red's honor. We earned scout badges for bravery in troll battle and expert frying pan skills. They even gave us our own princess crowns. <laughs> it, it was awesome. awesome. Hi kids, I'm your librarian, Miss Booksy. It's cool school story time. Everybody gather around. Everybody ready? Yeah. I said, is everybody ready? Yeah. Okay then. Oh, wait, where, where's that book? Oh, here we are. <laughs> Today's story is Little Red Riding Hood. It worked. Okay, once upon a time, a little girl named Little Red Riding Hood that's me, was packing a nice dinner to take to her grandma's house. My grandma was sick, and even though I had to walk a mile, I was ready to help my grandma because that's what good kids do, right? I packed up a sweet dinner, liver and onions and peas. Yeah! Oh, you don't like that? Okay then, fruit roll up some pizza, ice cream, and four Twinkies. Yeah! Okay, good choices. Now, there's only one good way to get to Grandma's. It's right through the scariest forest you can imagine. That's not scary. Oh, my bad. Better? Yay! Good. Whoa, but then someone or something snatched my red hood. <gasps> and snatched my basket of delicious snacks. <sighs> I've been robbed. Kids, robbed by a wolf. I said a wolf. And the wolf was wearing my red hood. That's a little girl's hood. He could stretch it out, the darn wolf. And he just looked silly, too. Then he spoke. What is a little girl like you doing all by herself in the woods like this? Going to my grandma's house, if it's any of your business. And it's not. So please give me back my stuff. Aren't you a sassy lassie? Maybe I will go to your grandmother's house and eat her. What do you think about that? Put some sauce on her, maybe some ketchup or mayonnaise, I don't know. Oh no you won't. You're not putting mayonnaise on my grandma. I yelled and I kicked and put the wolf ran off. And wolves can run pretty fast, even when they're wearing little girl's red coat that doesn't fit quite right. I had to get to grandma's and fast. There was a dangerous wolf in the woods, so I ran. Faster! Run faster? Yeah. Uh, okay. Faster! Okay! Woo! Uh, we're here at Grandma's house. Let me in, Grandma! There's a dang wolf outside in the woods, and he's stealing little girl's clothes and parading around, and I had a... And this time, he's wearing my Grandma's nightgown and sleeping cap. He even had on a pair of her high heels. And he was licking his paws, just like he'd eaten a snack. Or maybe, my grandma, what can I do? He's a wolf. But I had an idea. It was a good idea. I ran, and I ran, and ran, and ran, and ran, and ran really, really fast. Okay. Like a cheetah. Like a cheetah? What's that sound? It's like a clack, 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 clack. Is that the? And you'll understand one day, it's impossible to run in high heels. Then, right there, with his twisted ankle and his belly full of my grandma, he started to get sick. It was really gross. He, he, the big bad wolf threw up. Ew. He threw up all over the place. Yeah. Uh, he threw up.
up my grandma. Oh, don't worry, she was fine, not a scratch. He threw up all the fruit roll-ups and the ice cream and the pizza and the Twinkies. I don't feel so good. It was gross. But it gave me and Grandma time to get away. We called the police and the firemen and animal control, dog the bounty hunter, and everybody we could think of. And I'm happy to tell you the wolf was caught and sold to the circus. And now, every year since, Grandma and I go to the circus when it comes to town just to laugh at the big bad wolf. <laughs> he doesn't know any tricks or anything, but it's just funny to see a big old wolf wearing high heels. Well, my grandma and I go every time it's in town. And it just happens to be in town today. Yeah! Lucky you. <laughs> Follow me, I'll show you around. Ooh, look, it's the clown car. Guess how many clowns can fit in one tiny car? Four? Nope. Eleven? <laughs> no, that's a pretty good guess, but it's 24 whole clowns. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. That's like the highest number there is. There's Octavio, the guitar playing octopus. Cool. Hey there, little red riding hood. Any requests? Nope, just your usual. eating chicken. Uh, scary. It looks like it's starting. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, chicken's my favorite. Oh, I get it. A man eating chicken. <laughs> you got me. Oh, kids, there he is. The ferocious wolf that ate my grandma. I gotta admit, he's great on the tightrope. Ooh. Still wearing those heels, too. Wow, the wolf's got skills. And what's that under the tightrope? It looks like delicious mac and cheese, you know? The gooey, cheesy kind your mom makes. Maybe with a little breadcrumb topping, three cheese blend. But no, that's cold. Macaroni noodles and mayonnaise. Like the stuff people bring to potlucks. Ugh, more like pot yuck. You're doing great, Wolfie. Stay focused. Huh? Whoa, whoa, whoa. You gotta stay focused. There's my favorite circus act, five little monkeys. They jump on those trampolines like crazy. Don't worry, if they fall off, there's a doctor right there. How are you doing? Hey, look, it's Jack, the flame jumper. He gets better every time I see him. <laughs> The flame swallower! Talk about heartburn! <gasps> and finally, no circus would be complete without an amazing juggler! That's right, kids! I'm a wicked good juggler! <laughs> hey there, kids! It's me, Miss Booksy, and this is Storytime at Cool School. Today's story is Little Red Riding Hood the Return of the Big Bad Wolf. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a girl named Little Red Riding Hood, probably because she was always wearing a little red hood. But not this Halloween. That's when she traded out her red hood for a super cool costume. I'm the big bad wolf. Oh, <laughs> isn't my costume awesome? I look just like that silly old wolf who thought he'd eat my grandma. She's gonna think this is hilarious. Look at me, I'm the big bad wolf who stinks like cheese. <laughs> oh man, I'm definitely gonna win the costume contest this year. But meanwhile, and voila, I look just like that silly little girl who thought she could get rid of me. Look at me, I'm Little Red Riding Hood. I'm so annoying. I think I'm the best at everything. Well, we'll see who's the best when I win the costume contest. <laughs> Yep, it was a classic Halloween switcheroo. Let's talk about this costume contest. Every year, the town had a big carnival, and the person with the winning costume got a huge prize. This year, it's a Segway. You know, the thingies that you ride around on. I want to win it for my grandma so she can go anywhere she wants. Woohoo! But first, time to trick or treat. <laughs> trick or treat. Trick or treat. Trick or treat! It's the most wonderful time 
of the year. Oh, was that? No, it couldn't be. The real Big Bad Wolf was captured long ago. There's no way he escaped. But little did Little Red know, the Big Bad Wolf was on the prowl. And he was being very bad indeed. He stole candies from babies. <laughs> he knocked over old man Jenkins' jack-o'-lanterns. Hey! He even drank all of Granny Smith's prize-winning apple cider. <laughs> you rascal! The Big Bad Wolf was all trick and no treat. The townspeople loved Halloween and this mutt was ruining it. You're ruining Halloween. But the very last straw was when he ate Granny Smith. <laughs> Let me out of here this instant. <laughs> um, yeah, remember? The Big Bad Wolf totally had a thing for eating grandmas. Hello, Sheriff. It's me, Jenkins. Old man Jenkins. How are you? Well, doing all right. But we've got a situation. A wolf dressed as a girl just ate Granny Smith. A girl dressed as a wolf just ate Granny Smith? Yes. Wait, no. It was a... We're on it. Hello? While all this was going down, Little Red Riding Hood was getting more and more frightened that the Big Bad Wolf was in town. I had to go pick up my grandma before the carnival. Unfortunately, the only way to get there is through the super spooky woods. Extra spooky when it's Halloween, and there might be a big bad wolf on the prowl. <gasps> the word had gotten out about Granny Smith, and now the whole town was looking for the culprit. Arrest her! It's her! She's the one who ate Granny Smith! I saw it myself! I'm innocent! I didn't do it! Little Red Riding Hood was in jail for eating poor old Granny Smith. It's a total mix-up. I didn't eat anybody. It's the big bad wolf who did it. Yeah? Then why were you hiding? Looking like a stuffed Thanksgiving goose. A, I was hiding because I was scared. B, I was stuffed with Halloween candy. Not a sweet old lady. What am I, an animal? And C, I think you mean a Thanksgiving turkey who eats goose. Well, okay, smarty. How come you fit the exact description of the perp? I'm not a perp. Wait. What's a perp? Perpetrator. The one who is guilty. The girl dressed like a wolf, AKA you. It was the big bad wolf. And now he's out there running around. Little Red Riding Hood was right. The big bad wolf was still out there. And he was heading straight for grandma's house. Trick or treat. Hello, grandma. Oh my, what a wonderful costume. You look just like that old wolf. Why, thank you. And you sound exactly like him. Go on. You even smell just like him. Gee, what a stinker. Uh-oh. Hey, uh, don't I get a phone call? I want to call my grandma. That's sweet. Thank you. Hello, grandma? Grandma, it's an emergency. I'm in jail. Long story, but I have to warn you, the big bad wolf is back. Oh, hello, a little red riding hood. So good to hear from you. It's the wolf. Sheriff, the wolf is at my grandma's. Oh, you better not eat my grandma, you mangy mutt. He hung up. Rude. Sheriff, let's go get that wolf. That's it. I'm busting out. Now, how do I do that? If I throw this, I can drag the keys toward me. Great idea, me. <laughs> Bullseye! Bullseye. Adios, sleepyhead. I gotta go fight some crime. Ooh, better fuel up first. Little Red Riding Hood ran all the way to her grandma's house. It was dark and scary, but she was too determined, too brave to be frightened. Okay, I was a little scared until I realized it was just part of my grandma's Halloween decorations. I made it. <sighs> Time to save grandma. Yeah! Oh, Wolfie, I'm home. Little Red, help. Nice costume. Now let my grandma go. No way. Do it, you stinky wolf. Do I really smell so bad? That's the second comment today. Hey! Ha! Gotcha! And yeah, you smell like cheese. Let me go! This time, you're going to jail. 
Yoo-hoo, don't forget about me. Granny Smith, is that you in there? Oh, right. And you spit out Granny Smith this instant. Okay, fine. <laughs> Heavens to Betsy, it was dark in there. Little Red Riding Hood dragged the big bad wolf all the way back to the jail. There's your perp, Sheriff. A wolf dressed as a girl, not the other way around. Hide these so he doesn't get out, okay? See you later, Wolfie. I gotta go win that costume contest. And first prize, a brand new segue, goes to Little Red Riding Hood for her wolf costume. Sorry about the mix-up earlier. No problem, Mr. Jenkins. It happens. Grandma, come try out your new segue. <laughs> Let's break out the candy. Halloween party time! And that's the story of how Little Red Riding Hood defeated the Big Bad Wolf and saved Halloween. Hi, boys and girls, it's me, Miss Booksy, and today we have another one of my favorite classic stories, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. I remember when I got to be Goldilocks and the Three Bears were scared of something, some animal, but I can't remember what kind of animal could scare three big bears. Do you remember? Let's read it again and find out. Ah, <sighs> that's better. So, a little girl named, what? <laughs> I get it, Goldilocks. <laughs> A little girl named Goldilocks, that's me, was walking by a really scary swamp. No! Oh, too scary? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. There. So, I was walking through a sunny meadow filled with puppies and flowers. Oh, it's so cute. And then I happened upon a house. Oh, I was getting kind of hungry, so I decided to stop and see if they had any snacks. Hello? No one answered. So I just went in. Lucky me, there were some snacks on the table. Three whole bowls of broccoli. Ew. <laughs> oh, no broccoli? Okay, I meant there were three whole pizza pies. Better? Yeah! Awesome! Okay, so I started to eat from the biggest pizza. But it was a meat lover's supreme or something. It had pepperoni, sausages, hamburger, anchovies, mushroom, garlic, and onions. Yuck! Do you like garlic and onions? No! Me either. So, I moved on to the next pizza. It was weird, no cheese at all. It just had a bunch of vegetables on it. Come on, it's pizza. Do you want an all vegetable pizza with no cheese? No way! <laughs> yeah, there's a time and place for vegetables, right? Like on your brother's plate. <laughs> Ew! So I moved on to the smallest pizza. Boy, oh boy, it was just right. Just the right amount of cheese, a few pepperonis, and a dipping sauce for the crust. Mm, delicious. I ate it all up. Yeah! <laughs> then I felt like watching some TV. Well, they had some stuff TV'd, so I checked it out. The first show they had saved was a National Geographic special on grizzly bears. <laughs> Too scary. So I tried the next selection, but it was some show about catching fish. Kinda boring. So I tried the last show they had TiVo. <gasps> the Muppet Show! It had all the shows with Fozzie Bear. <laughs> then I realized I was really, Really sleepy. I decided these nice folks probably wouldn't mind if I just took a little nap. I found a bedroom and there were three beds. Oh geez, I had to make another decision. So I tried the biggest bed, but I climbed up and it was like trying to sleep on a big rock. That bed was not comfy. I tried the middle one, but it was like trying to take a nap on a bunch of cotton candy. Too soft. Well, I tried the little one, and you'd think I'd see the pattern by now, but boy, oh boy, this is just right. Wake up! What? Bear! Oh, oh yeah, 
I woke up and there were three bears looking right at me. Run! Oh, kids, you don't run from a bear. You have to make yourself look huge so they'll be scared of you. Okay, second line of defense against a bear, make them laugh. Bears love comedy. So what I like to do is find a funny video on YouTube, like the one, Charlie bit my finger, or the dramatic chipmunk, or just any funny cat video. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And those bears, turned out to be really, really nice. And we just sat around all afternoon watching funny videos and laughing and eating ice cream and honey. <sighs> so that's the story of me, Goldilocks, and my three new best friends, Barry, Teddy, and Gummy. The end. Well, it came time for me to go home. I was having a super good time, but I knew my mom would be worried about me. The bears insisted that I shouldn't go through the woods all alone again, so they packed up some honey and sardines. Hey, it's what bears like. <laughs> and we set out for our big forest journey, me and my three big bear bodyguards. We hadn't got more than 10 feet from the bear's house when little Teddy got scared because he saw a glowing thing in the dark. <gasps> it's a g g g g ghost a tiny ghost! No, baby Teddy, that's just a little lightning bug. You can catch it in your hand and see him light up. Look! <laughs> Sheesh, you'd think a bear wouldn't be so scared of a little bug. Anyways, on we went. About two minutes later, Gummy, the mama bear, suddenly just dropped to the ground and curled up into a ball. What are you doing, Gummy? Shh, it's a skunk. You gotta play dead or it'll get ya. Are you kidding me? You're a big old bear scared of a little skunk? I understand they're stinkier than a garbage truck in August, but come on, you're at least a hundred times bigger. Move aside, skunk. Three bears coming through. I think you know not to mess with us. We moved on past the skunk. Man, who's protecting who here? You probably can guess what came next. Just a little further up the path. The biggest bear, Papa Bear, stopped dead in his tracks. Just froze. Don't move. What is it? Bears. Big bears. Right over there. You are a bear. You can't be scared of... Whoa. What now? On the count of three, we run. One, two, three. <laughs> a sliding glass door. We were running at our own reflections. Hey, we're here. We're at my house. Sorry about the sliding glass door, guys. Mama must have just used a little too much window cleaner. But hey, you were so brave. We laughed the whole thing off by watching a hilarious video about a very scared bear. Look. <laughs> Gets me every time. Hi kids, it's me, Miss Booksy, here at Cool School. Ready for another read along? Today we're going to read Rapunzel. It's one of my faves. And I wanna see if you can read the words aloud with me. <laughs> Once upon a time, a young girl named Rapunzel was trapped in a tall tower by a mean old witch. The witch locked away Rapunzel for years and years so only she could ever visit her. And she had some very strange rules. The witch wouldn't let Rapunzel cut her hair. It grew and grew and nearly filled the tower. Rapunzel was very lonely. She twisted her hair into dolls to play with. She named them Harry and spelled it Harry. And Harriet spelled Harriet. She would sing from her tiny window to keep from getting bored. She had a beautiful voice. When the witch visited, she would call up, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. Then Rapunzel would throw her hair out the window. The witch would climb up Rapunzel's hair like a rope. One day, a prince rode by and heard Rapunzel singing. Then the witch appeared and called, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. The prince saw her beautiful hair drop from the tiny window. He was shocked to see the witch climb up and go through the window. Then he waited to see who owned the beautiful voice and the beautiful hair. Finally, the witch climbed down and Rapunzel's face appeared in the window. <gasps> the prince fell in love. I have a plan, thought the prince. 
he waited patiently. Then, in his best witch voice, he called, Rapunzel! <clears throat> Rapunzel, let down your hair! Rapunzel appeared again. Did you forget something, she asked. The prince said, uh, uh, I just wanted to tell you something really cool. But Rapunzel had a sharp mind to match her beautiful voice and beautiful hair. This was no witch. She peeked out the window and saw the prince. The prince asked to meet her and Rapunzel allowed him to come up, but only after he rode to the store and got some snacks and cards and magazines. They played go fish and ate fruit snacks and laughed until they got tummy aches. Rapunzel was so happy. The prince convinced Rapunzel that she should escape. He had the perfect getaway plan. He said they'd have to cut off most of Rapunzel's hair. That was A-OK -okay with her. She was more than just her hair. Off they cut it. They tied it to the bedpost and climbed out of the tower down to the ground. They left the thick braid hanging and hid. The witch arrived. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, the witch cried. Let down your, oh, there it is. Up the witch climbed. With the witch in the tower, Rapunzel and the prince grabbed the braid, hopped on the prince's horse and yelled, go! Pulling the braid free and leaving the witch trapped forever. They rode far away. Rapunzel twisted the braid into handsome wigs, which she sold to women and bald men in the prince's kingdom. She saved up and opened her own salon. She called it Rapunzel's Tower. I hope you like super happy endings because Rapunzel and the prince got married and then had two children, Harriet and Harry, and they all lived happily ever after. By the way, Harriet and Harry both had great hair. <laughs> the end. Hi there kids, Miss Booksy here with Storytime at Cool School. Today we're going to read chapter three of Cinderella. At the end of chapter two, the family had just received invitations to the Grand Royal Ball. I sure hope Cinderella gets to go. Let's see. I have to make a dress and my hair. What am I gonna do with my hair? And I have to prepare some witty banter. I haven't been around people, well, people I actually wanna talk to in forever. <laughs> I hope people still like knock-knock jokes. Those are my specialty. My stepmother had said I couldn't go to the ball. Well, I would just have to find a way, wouldn't I? <laughs> I began preparations in secret. My stepsisters went through dresses like they were going out of style, so I had lots of material to choose from to craft a perfect gown. <laughs> a little satin here, a little silk there, some velvet, pearls, and voila! <gasps> the most beautiful dress in the world. Oh. Shoes wouldn't be so easy though. My stepsisters had thrown out all of my shoes back when they first moved in. None of these shoes fit. <laughs> anyway, one day I was cleaning the attic when I found a box that I had never noticed before. <gasps> shoes, these must have belonged to my mom. They were beautiful slippers that looked almost as if they were made of glass, just like in my dream. <gasps> and next to the shoes was the most exquisite necklace I'd ever seen. Everything was coming together perfectly. But it's not like the royal ball was the only thing I was thinking about. Curiously, I hadn't heard anything about my dad. You know, the whole being captured by pirates thing. Supposedly my stepmother was on it, but I just wasn't sure I could trust her. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. Harvey Beeswax, private investigator, at your service. Hi, Mr. Beeswax. My dad was captured by a gang of pirates. I need your help. Pirates, eh? Yes, and my stepmother said that she can't find him, but she's done diddly squat. Diddly squat? That's not enough. I know. So, do you think you can find him? It'll be tough, but I'm the best private eye in the city. If anybody can find your pop, it'll be me. Great. I charge three gold bits an hour, plus expenses. Oh, right. Um, money. Yeah, I don't have any of that. Sorry, kid. No money, no detective. Wait. What if I paid you in jewels? Jewels? I like jewels. What do you got? So, I brought my mother's necklace to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Oh well, at least I still had the dress and shoes. Or so I thought. When I got home, I found this. It's mine. No, mine! Cinderella, who did you make this dress for? Me or Gritzel? Um, it's clearly for me. Blue makes you look like a blueberry. Well, blue makes you look like a, a blue whale. Cinderella, please settle this. I, I, I made it for myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Funny joke, right? <laughs> no, 
Not really. Gee, I can't decide who it would look prettier on. Me, obviously. Uh-uh, me. Oops, I didn't like it anyway. Okay, well, let's see. I had started the day with a lovely ball gown, a diamond necklace, and glass slippers. And suddenly I had no dress, no jewelry. Well, at least I still had the shoes. They didn't fit anyway. Welp, back to square one. It's finally the day of the ball. And I had nothing to wear. <laughs> what do you think, Pegasus? Could this be shabby chic? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Too casual. Cinderella, come here. <laughs> Ugh, gotta get to work. Meanwhile, hmm, no sign of Cinderella's old man yet, but I'll solve this case. Getting Gritzel and Unga ready was no small task. They required bubble baths. Manicures, pedicures, blowout. Finally, my stepsisters were ready for the royal ball. You guys look really nice. Um, we know. Okay, well, have a great time. <laughs> Unga, don't yell too much. And Gritzel, remember to say please and thank you. But don't forget to have some fun. That's quite enough talk, Cinderella. Goodbye. I'll be honest. I was kind of sad. I retreated to the barn with some snacks to eat my feelings. I know, it's pretty cliche, but I was sad, okay? And then, I don't know why, but I yelled out, oh, if I only had a fairy godmother. <laughs> Yoo-hoo. What? Hello. Oh. <coughs> Excuse me, frog on my throat. What's up? Did you find my dad? No, not yet. But don't give up, kid. I just came here to scrub for clues. Clues? Here? Yeah, you never know what you might find if you just look. You okay? Me? What? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely not crying or anything. Okay. Well, uh, see ya. He left, and I went back to feeling sorry for myself. Why? Why? Mr. Beeswax? Sorry I'm late, sugar, but better late than never, right? Who are you? Your fairy godmother. I thought that part was pretty obvious. Whoa, I thought that was just fairy tale stuff. Cool. A lot of people think that, but I'm real. Watch this. Awesome! I know, right? So how does this work? Do I get like three wishes or something? Three wishes? What do I look like, a genie in a bottle? Oh, so no wishes? Darling, I'm here to make all your wishes come true. But not all at once. It doesn't work that way. Oh. And some of the wishes will be wishes you didn't even know you wished yet. Say what now? I know what's in your heart, sugar. How? Honey, I'm your fairy godmother. It's fairy magic, you see? All right, so first things first, let's get you ready for the ball. The ball? Yes, I so want to go to the ball. I had a dress and a necklace and shoes, but my stepsisters, they tore everything up. Well, not the necklace. I gave that to Harvey Beeswax, private eye. Long story, but I really, 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 want really- want to go to the ball, yes, I know. And with a wave of my magic wand, Cinderella had just been explaining in detail the recent happenings that she had experienced to her fairy godmother. Yes, dear, I know. You want to go to the ball. So as I was saying, with a wave of my magic wand. Oh, yeah. Like, why wouldn't I want to go? Dancing, candy, disco balls, handsome princes, hopefully chocolate milk. I love chocolate milk. OK, hold the phone, honey. We can't have you going to the ball looking like this. Ah, uh, rude. Well, I just mean, you, you look, uh, like a mess. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You just don't look like a princess, that's all. Okay, listen, fairy GM, I think you need to quit while you're ahead and just help a sister out. Right, so, what's your favorite color? Blue, bluish aqua, turquoise, um, aquamarine, bright blue. Okay, all right, any shade of blue, I get it. With the wave of my magic wand, yeah. And with all my magical powers combined. Yeah. 
I will give you the most beautiful, flowy, princessy, sparkly, on sale from Black Friday, huh? Ball gown. Yeah! <laughs> and what do you think, honey? I love it! Hi, what's this? Oh, nothing, dear. I'm so excited. The prince is deaf gonna wanna juju on that beat with me at the ball. <laughs> Uh, you won't be dancing with those tootsies. Uh, yeah, I'm due for a mani-pedi soon. Well, stick your hands out and close your eyes, my little ragamuffin love. Boopy boopy blabbity boo! These are the bomb! Ooh, hopefully I won't break them. I'm kind of a klutz. Oh, they fit perfect! <laughs> okay, I better get on my way. Oh, wait. Pretty sure the castle is like 48 miles away. That would take approximately 864 minutes if I walk, if I hustle. Cinderella, and... get it together. I'm gonna hook you up. Now go get me a pumpkin, spaghetti squash, any gourd or root vegetable ought to do. Uh, no gourds to speak of, but how about this? My Halloween bucket. Well, let me just come here. That'll do, I suppose. Cinderella put the bucket down, and with one more swirl of the magic wand, the bucket became a gorgeous, sparkling carriage. A carriage is kind of like a stroller, but for adults. <laughs> I am gonna look so cool riding up in this thing. <laughs> You're gonna look cool for sure, Cinderella, but you also need to act cool. You simply need to follow my four fabulous formulas for fetching friends at a farty. Excuse me, I mean party. Oh yeah, I could use all the help I can get. Step one. Always laugh at people's jokes. Or tell your own. Oh, I've been told I have an amazing laugh. Wonderful, let's hear it. <laughs> All right, that's very distinctive. Uh, maybe just take it down a few notches. Okay, whatever. What's next? Step two, find common interests. Cheese puffs? Oh, those are my favorite snack. Snack, jinx, <laughs> same. I love those. See, we're so similar. <laughs> Okay, cheese puffs, got it. Okay, number three, be a dancing queen. Okay, this one is easy. I love dancing. Let me show you how it's done. You go, girl, do your thing. Whew, I was quite the mover and shaker in my day. Okay, so number four, I'm getting antsy and ready to go. Oh, well, you better get a move on. Um, I'll text you the rest. Sounds great, fairy godmother. <laughs> I'm just gonna be myself and have a blast. Hey, uh, who's driving this thing? My stepmother wouldn't let me go for my driver's license test. I almost forgot, you over there. And y'all over here. <laughs> well, we're off. <laughs> Thanks so much for everything, fairy. <laughs> you're the bestest in all the land. Well, you're certainly welcome. This is gonna be the best night of my life. Oh no, I forgot to tell her about the midnight thing. What is wrong with you? You forgot to tell Cinderella about the midnight rule. What were you thinking? Yoo-hoo, Cinderella! The fairy godmother caught up to the carriage and shouted after Cinderella. But clearly Cinderella was having so much fun, she didn't even notice. Well, desperate times call for desperate measures. <laughs> ah! Oh, you, uh, you scared me half to death. Cinderella, you can't go yet. Ah, fairy, you gotta cut the cord and let me go. I'm a grown woman. No, I mean the spell. Say what now? The spell at midnight. You have to be long gone from the royal ball by then. Uh, I have no intention of leaving when the party is still hopping. No, you absolutely must. No. You have to. No. You have to. Cinderella, listen to me. If you don't, then all this magic will wear off. There's always a catch. But don't worry about it. Go, enjoy yourself. Just keep track of the time. No prob. I'll set an alarm on my phone. So Cinderella continued on her journey to the castle, super excited and super nervous to meet the prince. You guys, this is going to be the best night Ever. At the ball, Cinderella is having the time of her life. Woohoo! When suddenly she noticed two very familiar but not so friendly faces, her stepsisters. Ah, uh, brother, or should I say, a sister. <laughs> These two. 
But the stepsisters didn't even notice her because they were too busy trying to vie for the prince's attention. Oh, by the way, there's the prince. Ooh, Unga, that prince is gonna love my dress. He's totes gonna dance the night away with me. No way, Grits. I'm sure he'll notice my breathtaking eyes and ask me to marry him. Meanwhile, Cinderella was doing her own thing and having so much fun at the ball. Then I told him, that's not a squirrel, it's a hamburger. <laughs> oh, Princey, you look hungry. Let me fetch you a treat. No, I will. Ugh. Cinderella was totally enjoying her night out and away from the barn that she kind of forgot there was a prince at all. Hey guys, who wants milkshakes? Cinderella, you are so much fun. Cinderella, guys, I don't want my stepsisters to overhear that I'm Cinderella. Please, um, please call me Sandy. Sandyrella, yep, that's me. <laughs> Why haven't we seen you around the kingdom before? Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, I've just been, um, you guys. Oh no, I don't want the people to know I live in a barn and I'm basically a servant. Oh, what were fairies rules again? Oh yeah, common interests. Cheese puffs, don't you guys love cheese puffs? Oh, <laughs> cheese puffs. cheesy, oh, yes. Oh, yes. They're amazing. Oh, I yes. love them so much, yes. they're so good. Ew, that was close. So Cinderella got back to the party, but she also started getting a bit sleepy. Woo, I am pooped. But I can't stop now. <laughs> Who knows when there'll be another royal ball. <laughs> I'm sure I still got time. But the whole evening, the prince had been noticing the mystery girl, Cinderella, or <clears throat> Sandyrella, <laughs> and how happy she looked, and how she was being nice to everyone, and ate tons of cake without a care in the world. Whoa, she is a seriously cool chica. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Of a klutz. Oh, no, no, it was my mistake. Here, let me help you out. <sighs> so, uh, this is some party. Oh, this old thing? Yeah, my mom goes kind of crazy. Yeah, my dad's kind of crazy, too. He was kidnapped by pirates. Yard. Pirates? Whoa. Yeah, pirates. Do you, you want to dance? dance? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh wait, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. oh my oh, gosh. gosh. <laughs> I like your crown. Thanks. I like your dress. Yeah, blue's my favorite color. No way, mine too. Ooh, common interest, bonus. So next week, uh, we're having this mini golf tournament here at the palace. Do you think you want to come? That sounds awesome. Cinderella had wondered how she would sneak away from her stepmother and stepsisters and come back to hang out with the prince, but whatever, she would figure it out. So it's a date, uh, I, I mean. But Cinderella didn't hear the prince because the music had gotten louder and she was feeling the beat. So loud, in fact, that she didn't hear her alarm on her phone ringing. Oh no, you guys, Cinderella's phone alarm was going off. That meant the midnight thingy. Leave me a comment and let me know what you think is gonna happen next. I can't wait. Subscribe so you don't miss Cinderella's adventures and tons more stories with me, Miss Booksy. Bye kids. <laughs> See ya.